This video is going to be showing you how to solo the K1 crew quarters legend lost sector which is on moon. The reason why it's this specific lost sector is because exotic chest plate is on today. So the new uh, season of the um, chosen exotics are chest plates for all three classes. So you want to be farming it. Now if you titan main you must be doing this today. If you haven't already got this chest plate do it today. You, as long as you're around 1290s 1280s you should be able to do it solo it'll just take you a little longer if you're 1300 power this can be done in five to ten minutes very easily so the, the modifiers on this are fallen champions barrier overload fallen modifier is hot knife which means shanks have solar shields destination modifier which means incoming void and aerial damage is increased for the enemy if you jump or take any void damage that is 50 percent for the enemy or something like that but for the arc damage buff is for us the burn it's not a singe it's a burn so 50% damage increase for all arc damage sources so you want to capitalize on that and play to that burn okay if you're not playing to that burn then you you know you're doing something wrong so you want to do that so before I show you the build I'll just show you well I'll show you what the chest plate the perk on it and why you want to farm it so it states greatly increase your funnel crash impact damage Gain an overshield that lasts longer the farther you travel before striking the target. So you're getting an overshield. Say you're weak and you pop your super, you'll get the overshield. Meaning you're even more tanky. You've got you've got more damage resistance anyways when you're in a super. So you're getting even more. Yeah, which is very good. Not only that, it incre greatly increases. It doesn't say how much buyer, which I wish they would start giving us numbers rather than just saying greatly or just a little bit or exponentially. Start putting numbers in your game. Please, Bungie, because they need to start doing this because it's not just this. It's a problem amongst everything in the game. We have to go and test. It's fine. I like that Bungie lets content creators play test their game to find out stuff. But there is a point where they need to start putting numbers on the screen of what everything does, please. But anyways, it gives you Celestial Nighthawk damage for Titans. Okay? Special Night Arc, as we know, is burst damage. Very high, high burst damage. So, it's very good on the Striker Titan because of this. So, we're going to be using it. If you don't have the chest plate and you farm them to get it, then you can still use this loadout. It's going to work just as good. But obviously, it works out a little bit better with this chest plate. So, as I stated, the mods are Champion, Anti Barrier, and Overload. So, we've got a Scout Rifle, a Solar Scout Rifle because there's Solar Shields, and an Overload Bow. If you want to do it differently and have a sniper on, then you could use the exotic solar bow or the raid solar bow from Last Wish, then put a kinetic sniper with anti barrier on. You don't really need the sniper. If you want to use the sniper, use it. But just make sure you're fitting solar somewhere into your build and arc. That's the main thing. But double primary works out fine. So we've got those two on. I'm using a blue scout because there's not many blue scouts. I would. Someone asked me this the other day why don't you use the solar scout rifle? reason why I don't use it is because it's the courtesy that people don't have it, right? So there's no point in me using it and then somebody saying, I don't have it. Then I have to redo the video, see? It's pointless. I've got a god roll as well. But if you have it, use it. Have it, use it. If you don't, then use this. Then we've got a arc rocket launcher on because of the 50% damage buff. So, um, any arc damage will do you... You know, obviously really well. Warcliffe Coil is insane. It one-shots champions at a medium distance, medium to close range. At long range, it won't. That's the only thing with it. So we've got that. In terms of mods, we have um, a Wrath of Rasputin, which works with a Solar Scout. It's got explosive on. Rage of the Warmind. We have Arc Damage Resistance on. You, I advise putting that on with a reload, with a reserve perk, sorry, for rockets. And rocket launcher finder on as well. Then we've got rocket launcher scavenger, recuperation for health if we need it, shield break charge, and a high energy fire. Because there's some shields we can take, you know, advantage of that. So that was the setup. Since this lost sector is really short, we're just going to concentrate exactly what's going on at each part and try not to miss anything out because, as I say, it's really short. So you just want to stand at the back of the map right here and just take out all the vandals. Once you take a couple of vandals and dregs, there'll be an additional spawn of dregs and vandals at the back of the map, which you're going to see right now. Here's the second spawn. 
just try and get them all as you can. A bow one shot them. So just try and use your bow more, you know, the bow's better than the scout because uh, the bow can just one shot, you know, the ads and stuff. If you have power, if you're not have power then that's different. Once all the dregs and vandals are down, take the two shanks at the back to get your charge of light, meaning we get a the um high energy fire. We'll get a stun with the bow and then get a grenade going. So that also finishes the champion off and it reloads our rocket because we've got demolitionist in this arc rocket. And that's pretty much easy to take out the champs. Rockets are really powerful on champions. Um but obviously they are he's getting a buff by fifty percent here, so there is that. This part's going to be the most tricky for most, um, but it's just all about where you stand, as I said. You just want to prioritise getting as many adds down as you can before the anti-barrier champion spawns. As when the anti-barrier champion spawns, it's going to make all the adds immune, meaning that you have to take the anti-barrier before the rest of the adds. But all the adds are going to snipe you, try to get you. This right, this location right here is good because it's just rock, so you can kind of take a little bit of down... Um, you know, sort of avoid a lot of the enemy fire. Good place to stand. I'm going to just take out any of the adds from back here. What you'll find with the anti-barrier is if you try to rocket at... F if you try to rocket an anti-barrier at full health, especially your servitor, they're just going to um, teleport from your rocket, even though this rocket has backing. So what you want to do is bear out the first shield with your scout or your sniper, whatever you're using, then get your rocket, because that's a brief moment of time but the champion will definitely not teleport. Therefore, you can, you won't miss your rocket. Simple as that. When the champion's down, um, you can then prioritize the rest of the adds. There's a couple of invisible marauders. Watch those. There's not much void damage, even though it says void damage is increased. The only thing that does void, really, is the servitors, the anti-barriers. And they're not dangerous either, so you don't really need to worry about uh, the void. That's why I had arc damage resistance on instead, because all the snipers are arc, etc. So it just makes sense having an arc damage resistance. But I have at least one reserve perking, because it's rockets. Even though they buffed them for ammo, they're still obviously a little bit low. But, you know, you only need to use one rocket per champ, so they're efficient on ammo that way. Same thing, we want to take out all the adds surrounding the champion. There is two solar snipers at the back, which we're going to use. To get the um, ING fire. Be careful they don't double snipe you. You can take those out. And then we can get a stun and then a rocket. And then just keep stunning him with your boat. If you have an explosive payload boat, it does help out. But it's not required, but... It is the best sort of bows you can have, the explosive one. Or frenzy, I know there's bows with frenzy now. Which they'll be interesting. Or vorpal weapon bows, they're good as well. With this bit, this is where all the solar shields come in. Try and take as many as you can before the champion does their tether. And at this point, you just want to, same thing with this anti barrier, you want to bear out the first shield while dodging the snipe, any snipers if there is. Get your first stun, rocket, and that's it done. Now, as I said, this scout, it's blue, but can create she um, the cells because it's got explosive payload and that's solar splash damage. If you have Wrath of Rasputin on with the Rage of Warmind, I mean, you only need Wrath, but the Rage just enhances it, gives it solar damage, like the cell. So it just um, meant that I could clear a lot of ads surrounding the boss, because obviously we're at the boss now. As I said, it's a really short run. Okay? What we're going to do here is going to clear out all the ads first, a rocket, then our super, and that just clears out the boss. If you haven't got the chest plate, it'll probably be two rockets, then a super. Okay? That just clears the boss, and then there'll be an anti-barrier spawn and a bunch of ads. We can just take them from this sort of um, ramp area. The ads can't really hit you. If you're close enough to a champion, however, they don't have time to teleport out of it. So we've done the rocket first. Try not to jump like that as well, because aerial damage is increased. Um, but that's pretty much the run. 
and you just clear out whatever's left and you can go and get your chest go and get your yeah I didn't get the exotic chest on this run but I got it on the previous run before this but that's how you would solve it on a Titan enjoy <laughs>